Motorstorm Apocalypse is an absolute gem of a racing game. It took the fast-paced, over-the-top racing Motorstorm was known for and set it in the middle of earthquakes and other kinds of catastrophic events. Hauling ass through a city as it crumbled down, it was awesome. But what wasn't so awesome was the timing. You see, just a little over a week before the game's scheduled release in March 2011, Japan was tragically hit with a 9.1 magnitude earthquake, a subsequent tsunami, and the Fukushima nuclear meltdown. The worst nuclear disaster since Chernobyl. So selling and marketing a game like Motorstorm Apocalypse during this difficult time? That just didn't fly. Motorstorm Apocalypse was met with various delays, was straight up never released in some countries, and in the regions it was released, received zero push or publicity. The game was essentially buried, and unsurprisingly, it completely bombed. I still love this game though, but having a game fail for external reasons beyond the developer's control, I mean, that just really sucks. And literally that same year, one month after the March earthquake, the PlayStation exclusive SOCOM 4 had its chances of success completely stifled as well. The game was dead on arrival, as it was a series best known for its online play, and it was released just a day before what is now known as the Great PlayStation Network Outage of 2011. SOCOM 4 bombed as well, and both developers behind MotorStorm and SOCOM have since been closed. 2011 was a rough year for Sony, to say the least. The PSN network outage and hack was a very public, very costly failure by the company on multiple levels. What's crazy to me is now, nearly 10 years after these events, we still don't know who was responsible. Who hacked Sony? It's being called a security breach of staggering proportions. Sony has confirmed that hackers broke into its PlayStation network, exposing the personal information of up to 77 million users worldwide. On April 20th, 2011, Sony's PlayStation network was taken offline worldwide due to an external intrusion into their servers. Over the subsequent days and weeks, the full scope of the hack became worldwide news, as Sony reported that over 77 million users had their personal data stolen in what is, to this day, one of the largest scale cyber attacks in history. This brings the total number of potentially compromised accounts to about 77 million. So how does this rank in the history of big data breaches? In terms of the raw number of people affected, pretty high. I was mainly a PlayStation gamer during this era and I remember it all so clearly because it was such a major hit to Sony's momentum with the PlayStation. Another thing I find fascinating is actually not the hack itself, but rather the lead up to it. You see, this seemingly wasn't a random attack on Sony. Behind the scenes, there was some interesting politics between several different parties that could possibly suggest that this was done in response to some of Sony's policies and legal actions. To fully understand the hack, we need to go back to 2006, the launch of the PS3 itself. That console was full of hype, full of promise, full of itself. 599 US dollars. But seriously, this thing was launching at a ridiculously high price point. Chad Wooden wipes his ass with $600. Had every unnecessary bell and whistle driving up cost was internally overly complicated to develop for, Sony started off completely on the wrong foot that generation and really had to work their way back up the ladder. Releasing more and more stripped down versions of their console as time went on. The PS3 really would evolve and transform as the generation went on. Not only did they strip down their hardware to make it more cost effective, such as completely removing PS2 backwards compatibility, which was hardware based, crazy to think about that, but they also made several changes and updates to the console's software and OS, which is normal today but fairly unprecedented at the time, including the complete removal of the install other OS functionality something that was a previously advertised feature of the console. Out of the box, you could have installed Linux on your PS3, which I still kind of find crazy that this was a thing, period. You'd never, ever see something like that with today's consoles. Removing the other OS functionality, that turned out to be a very controversial decision, and definitely pissed a lot of people off. Removing a previously advertised feature like that, it even resulted in a class action lawsuit against Sony for not complying with consumer protection laws. And this was just the tip of the iceberg. The reason for its removal was actually in response to a jailbreak exploit created by George Hotz, or GeoHot, as he was known as online. The same person who created the very first iPhone jailbreak. This is the world's first unlocked iPhone. 
In 2010, Geohot released an exploit that allowed users to run unsigned code on PlayStation 3 systems, and later would host said exploit on his personal website for the public to download. And there you go, Geohot does homebrew. Load it up. Props to Fail Overflow for working out the uh, ECDSA bug, and props to me for finding the Metloader key. To the surprise of absolutely no one, in January 2011, George Hotz and the hacker group Fail Overflow were served a series of lawsuits by Sony for copyright infringement, violating the California Computer Crime Law, violating the PlayStation Network's terms of service, and many, many more. Sony had requested a restraining order to cease further operation and distribution of the exploit, as well as seizure of all of GeoHot's computers and hardware that contained the jailbreak code. In addition, Sony sought the information of all of the users who visited GeoHot's website. These were some pretty serious charges, and ones that GeoHot clearly took very, very seriously. Yo, it's GeoHot! And for those that don't know, I'm getting sued by Sony. <laughs> Let's take us out of the courtroom and into the streets. I'm a beast, at the least you'll face me in the Northeast. Uh, get my ire up, light my fire. I'll go harder than Eminem when at Mariah. Call me a liar, pound me in the ass with no Luke Chafe fan. You're fucking with the dude who got the keys to your safe fan. Those that can't do bring suits, cry to your Uncle Sam to settle disputes. Thought you'd tackle this with a little more tact, but then again, fudge packers, I don't know jack. Sony's legal actions then caught the attention of the notorious hacktivist group, Anonymous. On April 3, 2011, Anonymous put out a statement which marked the beginning of what they called Operation Sony. Congratulations, Sony. You have now received the undivided attention of Anonymous. Your recent legal action against fellow hackers Geohot and Graf Jacolo has not only alarmed us, it has been deemed wholly unforgivable. You have abused the judicial system in an attempt to censor information on how your products work. You have victimized your own customers merely for possessing and sharing information, and continue to target every person who seeks this information. In doing so, you have violated the privacy of thousands. This is the information they are willing to teach the world for free. The very same information you wish to suppress for the sake of corporate greed and complete control of the users. Now, you will experience the full wrath of Anonymous. You saw a hornet's nest, and you stuck your penises in it. You must face the consequences of your actions, Anonymous style. Knowledge is free. We are Anonymous. We are Legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. Three days later, on April 6th, Sony was hit with a series of distributed denial of service, or DDoS, attacks against their various sites and services, including the Sony website, PlayStation Network, PlayStation.com, and the PlayStation Blog, they were all taken down. Sony would go on to claim that these outages were the result of system maintenance. And on April 7th, Anonymous ceased the attack as it was mainly negatively impacting the gamers. Anonymous is on your side, standing up for your rights. We are not aiming to attack customers of Sony. This attack is aimed solely at Sony. And we will try our best to not affect the gamers as this would defeat the purpose of our actions. If we did inconvenience users, please know that this was not our goal. And almost two weeks would pass without incident. But then, on April 19th, 2011, Sony detected unauthorized activity on their servers, as certain systems started rebooting when they were not scheduled to do so. And on April 20th the following day, after an internal investigation as well as hiring a third-party security firm, Sony takes the entire PlayStation Network offline. Gamers all over the world were unable to log in, unable to play online multiplayer, make purchases through the PlayStation Store, everything was offline. This angered gamers and game publishers alike. No one spending money, online-centric games like SOCOM and Mortal Kombat which were just released are greatly hindered, PSN being down is just bad for business. Especially at first, what frustrated a lot of people was Sony's complete lack of transparency. And finally, nearly a week after taking the PlayStation Network down, Sony notified the public that the hack resulted in the leak of PSN users' vital information. The PlayStation Network is still dead. The PSN has been down since April 20th. After six days of the outage and barely any word from Sony on what was going on, Sony revealed that everyone's personal information had been compromised. Including names, birth dates, addresses, email addresses, and PlayStation Network passwords, handles, and online IDs. 
This was a cyber attack on a massive scale, and it made headlines around the world. Sony was met with backlash, unsurprisingly, for not having a secure infrastructure in the first place, as well as not notifying their customers in a timely manner. The massive hack also caught the attention of Congress, which Sony had to respond to. Kaz Harai, who was a chairman at Sony at the time, sent a lengthy open letter to the US House of Representatives, which detailed Sony's response to the attack. This was also published over on the PlayStation blog, which is truly crazy. In order to get back online, Sony had to completely rebuild the PSN from the ground up, and as a show of good faith, Sony assured their customers that a welcome back package would be on the way once the network was restored. This included a full year of identity theft protection on the house. By May 14th, the PlayStation Network was officially back online worldwide. During and following the PSN outage, Anonymous denied any involvement in the attack, a stance which they maintain to this day. However, in Kaz Farai's letter to Congress, it states that during the investigation, a file was discovered on Sony's servers called Anonymous that contained the words, We are Legion, a calling card. But again, Anonymous denied any involvement in the PSN hack. And to be fair, stealing credit cards and personal information definitely is at odds with the group's usual MO. So if it wasn't Anonymous, who hacked Sony? An important thing to note here is that Anonymous is a decentralized group of hackers that consists of a large number of people who are, well, anonymous. So while it may not have been an official anonymous operation, it's entirely possible it was performed by individuals from Anonymous acting independently. Another important thing to note is during Operation Sony, after scans were run on the PSN servers, it was discovered that their software was not up to date. In particular, Sony was running an outdated version of Apache that left their servers vulnerable. But yes, they screwed up. They screwed up bad, and what they did was they didn't invest in security over the last decade, and now they're paying the price. Apparently, word spreads fast in the hacker community, and around this time, Sony's lack of security became quite well known in these circles. So another strong possibility is a person or group with this knowledge attacked Sony under the guise of Anonymous. Classic misdirection. Left a fake calling card on the server to throw Sony and the authorities off their trail. Sadly, we will likely never know the answer, as it's been nearly 10 years since the Great PlayStation Network outage of 2011, an ordeal that resulted in the leaked personal details of 77 million users and cost Sony an estimated $171 million. The crazy thing is, there were rumors shortly after of people shopping around PSN users' data to potential buyers. Several media outlets reported today that the hackers have begun advertising their exploits on online forums looking to sell the information, which also includes customer names, passwords, and addresses. Someone out there knows. But in the meantime, we're still left with the question, who hacked Sony? Thank you so much for watching this episode of Deep Cuts. As always, please let me know what you thought about it, and hit that like button if you did enjoy it. it really does help this channel out a lot. And if you're interested in stories similar to this one, consider checking out the Deep Cuts playlist and binge watch some of the other stories that we've covered on this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. Peace.